Hey, what's going on, Who That Nation? It is yours truly, TJ Jones, the host of the State of the Saints podcast. And some of you probably thought about starting your very own sports podcast. Well, let me help you out. I want to tell you a little bit about Anchor. Now, if you haven't heard about Anchor, it's an easy way to make a podcast. And it's free. You don't have to worry about paying a bunch of money each month. There are creation tools to allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so you don't have to worry about that. So it can be heard on apps like Spotify and Apple Podcasts and many, many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. So go to anchorfm.com and start your very own podcast today. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Hey, what's going on, Who That Nation? It is yours truly, TJ Jones, the host of the State of the Saints podcast. And I have a special guest with me. We have Who That, uh, Who that Disc contributor. And he also has his own podcast, The Mike Belco Show. Uh, I want you all to uh, welcome Mr. Mike Belco. What's going on, man? What's up, guys? How we doing today? Happy to be on the show today. Yeah, man. Appreciate your time, man. Thank you so much for spending your Friday morning. Man, I knew it early, man, you know. but <laughs> No worries. No worries. Yeah, so I appreciate you, uh, you know, checking in with us, man, to talk New Orleans Saints. I'm excited oh, yeah. about this, man. Uh, man. And I'm also excited about training camp, Mike. I'm excited about, you know, some of the storylines that are going on in training camp, uh, especially the wide receiver position. The Saints have a lot of uh, good wide receivers on the team, a lot of young talent. Uh, who is the the person that you feel like is going to uh, actually be a part of that starting rotation? I mean, we already know about Michael Thomas, Emmanuel Sanders. That's pretty much set in stone. But the third uh, wide receiver alone, fourth, fifth, and sixth, uh, who do you feel like is going to be a part of that rotation? Yeah, so obviously we all know as Saints fans, that's a big wild card position for us. I know the Saints have talked about wanting to get Deontay Harris a little bit more involved with the offense, um, you know, but if, I, if I'm throwing out wild cards, I'm, I'm going to say Marquez Callaway, our undrafted free agent from Tennessee. I think he's got a ton of potential um, and he's got some sick dreads too. So, you know, he's rocking <laughs> that, that Marcus Colston number too. So yeah, I think yeah. he has a ton of potential. Emmanuel Butler's another guy. Um, Jawan Johnson, also undrafted free agent from Oregon, is a, a very, very good player as well. Um, but Trey Quan Smith is obviously, I think, going to be that number three guy. He's going to have a lot of mismatches. He's usually the number three, but he kind of fits in that number two role. He just has to really just kind of step up and embrace, you know, maybe not just make one great catch a game. Let's maybe make like three or four great catches a game, right, right. especially when there's going to be linebackers on him like nine times out of ten. Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, it's a Traquan Smith job to lose. And I think that uh, the addition of Emmanuel Sanders is going to help him out tremendously because Emmanuel Sanders does a lot of his damage in the slot. And the Saints use Traquan Smith in the slot quite a bit because of Ted Ginn Jr. Now that we see Ted again, he's out there in Chicago. That frees up a spot for Traquan where I feel like he can play on the outside a little bit more where he flourished that Central Florida and it might be able to help him resurrect his career, man. Because right now, uh, you know, a lot of question marks about Traquan Smith, to say the least. Uh, uh, as far as Marquez Callaway, man, uh, man, it seems like to me that the Houdet Nation has embraced this guy like more than any other of the young rookies, even like players that have been on the team for a year or two. What is it about Marquez Callaway, in your opinion, that makes him stand out among the rest? Man, he just got like a swag about him, bro. It's just like he's there to work and, you know, he's there with the – mentality that like kind of like you just mentioned with Traquan Smith like it's his job to lose you know like right. my man former teammates with Alvin Kamara you know he was a beast at Tennessee which is a big school mm-hmm. playing against really good opponents against some really good corners he was balling out um and honestly I can't believe he didn't get drafted I had him mm-hmm. I actually wrote some mock drafts uh, earlier in the year and I had Callaway going to us in like the fifth or sixth mm-hmm. so it's crazy that he didn't even get picked and I'm, I'm thankful he's on our team. I just hope that the saints don't do him like they, like they typically do and keep Austin Carr on the roster and not keep an actual <laughs> talented receiver on the team. <laughs> well, I mean, I think Marquez Callaway, I think the one thing that, uh, that he, that he suffered from was the fact that Tennessee doesn't have really good quarterbacks, man. And I think it's the same thing with Alvin Kamara, you know, Alvin Kamara, you know, uh, was a, a big fish, you know what I'm saying? And a little pine, you know what I'm saying? And the fact that Tennessee, uh, you got to go back to like 
Uh, you know what I'm saying? T. Martin back in 98, last time you actually seen a credible quarterback yeah. at Tennessee. So I think that uh, Marquez Callaway, he is a steal. And I think that Jeff Ireland and, you know, the rest of the scout team do an outstanding job finding those diamonds in the rough, you know, in order to come to the New Orleans Saints and contribute right away. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing Callaway possibly on the field. But uh, speaking of diamond in the rough, uh, Mike, let, let's talk a little bit about tight end Adam Troutman. Now, I was looking at an uh, interview earlier uh, with Jared Cook. Uh, he talked a little bit about Adam Trotman and the fact that he has uh, grasped the playbook and he has been doing an outstanding job so far in practice. So what is it about Adam Troutman that, uh, once again, has everybody going crazy about, I mean, comparing him to people like Rob Gronkowski and George Kittle? I mean, that, that is some elite territory right there. But um, do you think that he has what it takes to actually live up to the expectations? You know, he's a raw prospect. You know, the Saints the Saints have a thing for raw prospects, just like they did with Davenport. Um, but, yeah, you know, I think a lot of that those comparisons come with a 6'6 frame, obviously. Um, but the dude was a dog, and he was, yeah. you know, a lower D1 school at Dayton. And, you know, his senior year, he had 70 catches. He had about, uh, I think it was 900-something yards and mm-hmm. 14 touchdowns. Like, right. that, that's, that ranks you amongst the best tight ends in the nation right there. In his career, he scored 31 touchdowns and – two of his years he was injured so I mean the dude the dude's obviously just a natural playmaker and when you're playing for those smaller schools you have to be a playmaker to really stand out and you know Dan Campbell actually the Saints tight end coach was uh kind of talking about him earlier this year I saw it on a different podcast Mm -hmm. about how he's already just kind of coming and like taking over the room and you know like Jared Cook's a big fan of him as you said Mm -hmm. um and it's almost kind of like a transition year. So I think he's going to learn a lot from Jared Cook. I think he's going to learn a lot from Josh Hill, two established veterans. And then I think, you know, next year he's going to be that number one. As we see Cook, you know, we have a lot of contract disputes going on. So I think, you know, Cook could be on the way out. This could be his last year. And then, you know, Troutman's going to take over. And then, you know, who knows what's going to happen with Tommy Stevens as well. So there's a bunch of bunch of uh, scenarios, question marks going on with the Saints. Right. But, yeah, I think Troutman is going to live up to that hype. I don't know if he's going to be Rob Gronkowski, but, I mean, <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> I mean, e- even if you're, like, close to being Rob Gronkowski, right. you know what exactly. I'm saying? It's still a plus. You know I mean? Rob Gronkowski. Without the injuries. It, exactly. You know, like, <laughs> I mean, Rob Gronkowski, I mean, arguably the greatest tight end to ever play the game. So, I mean, even if you're, like, you know, half of what he is, I mean, you pretty much have a solid career. Uh, but you uh, mentioned another guy I want to talk about, Tommy Stevens, man. Tommy Stevens, the Saints, uh, moved back into the draft to um, acquire him. Uh, he came out of Mississippi State, uh, spent a little bit of time at Penn State as well. But um, he was supposed to play the quarterback position, but the Saints moved him to tight end. Uh, what do you think about Tommy Stevens making this move, and do you think that he can be a part of the starting rotation or even make the team at tight end? So I'm happy you asked that. I'm a big Tommy Stevens fan. I've actually talked to Tommy Stevens a little bit mm-hmm. back in the day when he wasn't famous. But <laughs> um, so, yeah, yeah, the dude's driven. So, I mean, he's got that going for him. And, you know, believe it or not, like, I think a kind of a guy at the tight end position this year that could be on the bubble is Josh Hill. Like, I know yeah. it seems crazy because, like, I mean, the dude's nope, just nope. old reliable. It, it don't. It don't. <laughs> it yeah. don't sound crazy. <laughs> right. Right, right. But, like, I mean, he's just always reliable. You know, he's just always catching passes, has a 77 com- career catch percentage, Josh Hill. Um, but, yeah, I think, you know, Tommy Stevens, before he was even selected, um, you know, before the draft even started, the Saints were in contact with him, and they asked him to send videos of him running routes, blocking, you know, doing, like, receiver running back type thing. So they, they kind of envisioned for him to be, like, kind of a Taysom Hill. Mm-hmm. So this doesn't really come as a surprise to me that they're moving him to tight end. Um, it is kind of a surprise that they're actually like permanently switching his position to tight end and not more of less like a quarterback hybrid like Taysom Hill. Yeah. But I think he can make the switch. And, you know, if Josh Hill ends up getting cut and they want to keep Tommy Stevens, which honestly wouldn't be a bad idea, um, you know, having a guy who could play quarterback, running back, receiver, tight end, you know, that's not a bad idea. Um, yeah, on the roster, I think I think that'd be a smart, smart move for them. Yeah, I think it would be a smart move as well. Um, I think that by um, adding him to the team, a lot of people were comparing him to the skill set of what Taysom Hill actually had. So I think that this is just me um, just guessing. I'm feeling like the New Orleans Saints wanted to uh, transition uh, Taysom Hill to a more of a quarterback role. 
um, to get him acclimated, you know, said to the offense exactly. and being a quarterback. Not to say that he's going to be the successor to Drew Brees. I, I talked about that on the last uh, podcast. Uh, you know, not that they're trying to make him the successor, but you want to give him all the tools uh, in, in the toolbox in order for him to make or break his career. You know, so exactly. I mean, I've been the, preaching this, bro. I've been preaching yeah. this. I mean, it, I mean, it's the truth. I mean, I feel like that's that'd be very unfair for us in a who that nation to be critiquing Taysom Hill if he does. I mean, he even touched on it, I think, maybe like a year ago. He talked about how he has to go from room to room, special teams room, tight end room, quarterback room. So for him being in one room, allowing him to absorb the offense and get more acclimated to the playbook, I think it will be beneficial. And you adding somebody like Tommy Stevens with a similar skill set is going to help out uh, Taysom Hill tremendously at the quarterback position. Uh, right. but, but speaking of quarterback positions, uh, Jameis Winston uh, was acquired in the offseason by the New Orleans Saints. Uh, right. It's no uh, surprise right now, over 5,000 yards, 30 touchdowns, 30 interceptions. Uh, he comes to the New Orleans Saints. A lot of unanswered questions and a lot of, in my opinion, untapped potential. Uh, do you think that the Saints uh, will be able to use Jameis Winston this season? And if so, do you feel like they could resurrect his career? That's a tough one, man. So obviously you can't predict injuries. You can't predict who's going to get COVID, who's not, right. stuff like that. Right. Um, so it's hard to say whether we're actually going to use him or not. And like you mentioned, like if Drew Brees were to go down, if Drew Brees were to get COVID, if Drew Brees were to, you know, something happens to Drew Brees, he can't play a week. Are they going to go with Taysom or are they going to go with Jameis? That's a tough one. I think the nod does go to Jameis simply because he has been an established quarterback. He did lead the NFL in passing yards. He was the number one overall pick. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I I am a big fan of Jameis Winston as well. I was, I'm actually a Florida State fan. So, Mm -hmm. you know, obviously I got to see him at Florida State and I saw him lead us to a national championship, all that stuff. And yeah, so, you know, obviously having to go against him in Tampa Bay hasn't been the greatest, you know, little stretch for him, but. Uh, you know, he does have a ton of potential. He does have all the tangibles it takes to to be a starting quarterback in the NFL. And he turned down, you know, offers to make more money just to learn under Drew Brees and Sean Payton. It goes to show that, like, he is genuinely concerned about, like, his career. He wants to really genuinely make a change for the better. And it could be another Teddy Bridgewater situation where, you know, he gets to play a couple games this year and goes off and makes a bunch of money. Or it could be a, he doesn't play. He and he resigns with the Saints for a little bit less, and you know Drew Brees hangs up the cleats, and then we have a nice battle between Taysom and Jameis. And right. you know, I think I think I give Jameis the nod there. Yeah, look, I think one thing that uh, kind of hurt Jameis Winston was the fact throughout his entire career, for the exception of maybe like his first year, they really didn't have a running game out there in Tampa. You know, you had Doug Martin, but I mean, he was in and out of the lineup. Uh, there was a plug and place type mentality when it came to the running back position. Not too much stability and not to mention Bruce Arians who became the head coach. I mean, this guy likes to throw the ball all over the place, bombs away type offense. And uh, I I feel like uh, every quarterback that has ever played with Bruce Arians has always struggled when it comes to the interception. I mean, you can even uh, talk about Andrew Luck, man, you know, when um, Chuck Pagano went down and Bruce Arians actually came in and he was the offensive coordinator and head coach. Uh, Andrew Luck had an issue with turning the ball over. I mean, Carson Palmer, I mean, the list goes on and on. So uh, I feel like with uh, Jameis Winston uh, coming into the Saints offense, uh, I feel like uh, the fact that he has a running game, uh, the fact that I feel like Sean Payton is going to uh, utilize his strengths, just like he did with Teddy Bridgewater. You know, Teddy Bridgewater, he didn't ask Teddy to do uh, what he wasn't comfortable with doing. I feel like it will help Jameis Winston, and I, I think he will resurrect his career. And you mentioned it. I feel like it's going to be a very interesting battle, and I don't think that the Saints just signed him for a one-year deal just to keep him uh, as a backup to Drew Brees. I think they see uh, some potential in him. Uh, but but let, let's talk a little bit about the offensive line. Um, the offensive line, uh, there's some new faces. Uh, we know about Cesar Ruiz, the, the first-round draft pick out of Michigan, uh, and we know about Eric McCoy, who did a – okay job playing center last season uh, once Max Unger decided to hang it up. But there's a, a position battle going on uh, between Cesar Ruiz and Eric McCoy. Uh, do you feel like Cesar Ruiz will start as the center of the New Orleans Saints in his rookie season? Or do you feel like he is going to be a guard and in his second season, the Saints are going to transition him to center? Yeah, so he's going to be a center. Um, and I'm pretty sure Sean Payton already kind of mentioned that or at the offensive line. So one of the coaches already kind of mentioned that, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but yeah, I think, yeah, they, they have all intentions of starting Caesar Ruiz at center, I believe at least. Um, and then they're transitioning Eric McCoy to guard. Actually, I believe Eric McCoy on the Saints roster, if I'm not mistaken, right. is already listed as a guard. Um, so I believe they already moved him over there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think McCoy is going to do much better at guard than he did at center. Right. And I think Ruiz is going to be absolutely phenomenal center to have for Drew Brees' final season. I think he had like the highest, like one of the highest graded like scores ever coming out of college at Michigan right. and all of this, all these like accolades he had and didn't even, I think he only gave up like one sack in his college career. Dude's a genius. So I'm, you know, so is Drew Brees. So I think they're going to, they're, they're going to click well. And I think he's going to be a great center that the Saints are going to have for years. Yeah, um, this is a position. And um, I had uh, Zach Streif on the show a couple of days ago. And um, he was talking a little bit about uh, the Saints uh, trying to, uh, you know, find uh, that next Max Unger. You know, and uh, and I think Cesar Ruiz is the answer. I mean, I, I think he only had like two flags in his entire college career. And I think was yeah. a legal man downfield for both of them. So I mean, man, she's anxious. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that tells you that tells you everything that you need to know about this guy, you know. And I, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing him, and I think that there's finally going to be, uh, you know, some true stability. Even though you know Eric McCoy did a good job, but some true stability, um, at the center position. Uh, finally, I want to ask you, man. We, we're talking about the offensive line, and of course, you know, their job is to protect not just the quarterback, but also run block. And um, something that has been an issue with the New Orleans Saints, and I, I know you hear it all the time, is the fact that we feel like the Saints need to run the football, okay? They need to commit a little bit more to the run. So Alvin Kamara, you know, he had injuries last season. Um, He came out and, and said, you know, he had, I mean, he was injured um, after the Jacksonville game. Latavius Murray came in, uh, played two games and started, went over 100 yards in both of those games. And then when Alvin Kamara came back, we didn't see Latavius Murray and we did not really see a true commitment to the running game. In 2020, Mike, do you feel like the Saints are going to be more committed to the run, being that it Drew Brees is possibly in his last season? Yeah, I, I, I think they will if, you know, Eric McCoy can make that transition to guard, and if Cesar Ruiz ends up being as good as he's hyped up to be. Mm-hmm. I do think so, yeah. And I do think they need to give Latavius Murray the ball more. I like – I like using Kamara the way we use him in like that flex hybrid kind of role. Like it seems like it's it's crazy. Like everybody on the Saints seems to be a flex hybrid kind of guy. Right. But you know, I like the way you know Alvin Kamara, eighty one catches in his first three years, every single year, eighty one, eighty one, eighty one. Yeah. So you know, Pro Bowler three years in a row. I like the fact that he's like our receiving back, kind of like a Darren right. Sproles or a Reggie Bush. You know, right. bouncing around the outside type of guy. Yeah. But I want Latavius Murray, man. Like Latavius Murray right. still managed to get like almost seven hundred rushing yards, and he ran the ball like a hundred. 20 times that's insane that is insane bro like this dude this dude's like our pure running back like I think honestly if he were to play a full season I think he would put up better numbers than like Mark Ingram did with us and it's insane he just fits so well with our offense and he's just such a you know he's like 6'4 impossible to tackle like but yeah I think you know when you have two really good running backs and then you also have like you know a Taysom Hill you can throw back there you have like a a Tony Jones Jr. who's a undrafted free agent who's looking to make the roster as well. Right. Who's he's literally a mix between Latavius Murray and Alvin Kamara. I think he's I, I'm sure we'll touch on it a little bit later, but I think right. you know he could make the roster mm-hmm. coming out of the backfield. But and then Ty Montgomery now, man, like yep. you know, you're adding all these all these studs in the backfield. There's no reason why you shouldn't commit to the run. Yeah, I mean, and not to mention Dwayne Washington too, man. Right. Another guy who who comes in, I mean, you can say that it's a uh, garbage town, a mop-up duty, but, I mean, this guy still uh, contributes. Uh, He's got I, some juice. I, yep. And not to mention back in 2018, you know, when he actually went over 100 yards against Carolina. Now, I know mm-hmm. we got blew out, but, I mean, he was the bright spot uh, in that game, you know. And, mm-hmm. he, and, I, and and keep in mind, I mean, he was running behind an offensive line that the Saints signed off the street. So I, I, think, that, uh, I think they should have more of a commitment to the run. And you mentioned uh, Latavius Murray, Mike. I, I, I said last night on a podcast, I said Latavius Murray is like they have that saying, uh, he he's the bridesmaid, but he's never been a bride. I right. mean, every, everywhere that he went, he was always good, but teams, coaches, organizations did not want to commit to him. Out in Oakland, I mean, he went over 1,000 yards, had his best uh, season, uh, probably in the best career, you know what I'm saying, career stats in right. Oakland. He gets signed by Minnesota. You know, Minnesota decides to go get Dalvin Cook. 
I mean, it just seems to me like Latavius Murray, I don't know what it is about him. I don't know why teams don't want to commit to him, but he always leaves his his print everywhere that he goes. And I, I feel like when I look at the way that he runs the football, the way that the New Orleans Saints could possibly use him. I mean, this guy went over 100 yards against the Chicago Bears defense. And mm-hmm. I understand Akeem Hicks wasn't playing at the time. I get it. But Khalil Max had, was. Yeah, I, yeah, and they had Roquan Smith out there and mm-hmm. all these other players, you know what I'm saying, that were out there. I mean, Khalil Mack was out there. So let's not make it seem like, you know what I'm saying, that wasn't impressive. So right. I like him a lot, man. But Me too. Uh, but Mike, thank you so much for being part of the State of the Saints podcast. And yeah. before you get up out of here, man, let everybody know how they can get in touch with you. Yeah, so I'm on Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff. Twitter is at Michael Balco Jr. And then Instagram is at Michael.Balco. Y'all can hit me up anytime, any Saints questions. I'm always open to do podcasts, all this good stuff. And then also, you know, tune into whodatdish.com. I'm posting articles all the time covering the Saints. So, yeah. State of the Saints podcast on the way up, though, bro. You've got a good man. thing going here, man. <laughs> man, I appreciate it, man. Um, you know, but I mean, it's for for people like yourself, you know, that's, uh, you know, nice enough to come and be a part of the show. And also the Who That Nation, man. I mean, I, I can't take much credit for that, man. It's all because of you guys. And I appreciate it, man. And we're looking forward to uh, seeing some of your contributions to the Who from the Who That Dish. And also, man, uh, checking out your podcast, too, on Anchor FM, uh, the yeah, Mike sure. Belko Show, man. So uh, we're sure. looking forward to it. And thank you so much for your time, man. Yeah, no worries. Have a good one, bro. All right. You take care. This is the State of the Saints podcast. Michael Belko, yo. Y'all take it easy. All right. Who that?